Side is the Latin phrase Rex Regum Dominus Dominantium, which stands for King of Kings and Lord of Lords, words that ever ring out in the hearts of its people, seemingly affirming their unwavering faith in the Almighty who guided them through the annals of their old and historic town. Villa de Bocalor capital of the old culture having been the home of the first settlements. The kingdom from which Prince Balagtas made possible the unification and gathering together of the various Kapampan colonies into one ancient empire, Bacolor, together with the pioneer towns of Lubao, Betis, Apalit, Candapa, and Makabebe formed the original province or what was later to be known as Lower Pampanga. Bacolor, which takes its name from the Kapampangan word Bakulud, which means elevated ground, dates back to the early 14th century and is said to have been founded by a group of immigrants from Sumatra. It was a thriving prosperous settlement, a prehistoric trading town that later fell into decline at the time the Spaniards founded it as a town in 1576. Its strategic location and the innate industry of its people made it grow. It was described by a Spanish chronicler Juan de Medina in 1620 as the best pueblo not only in Pampanga but in all the islands. Bacolor has more than a thousand Christians under the bells. It is about one and a half days journey from Manila by sea and stream. It has the best meadowland in the islands and all of its produces rice abundantly. It has a celebrated church which is entirely built of stone and brick with a famous crucifix. The housing too is of stone. The inhabitants are the richest and the most clothed in all Pampanga and have the most prominent chiefs. From these prominent chiefs descend the many of the great families of Bacolor like the Panlinios, the Zatines, and the De Leons. Its church, built in the 17th century, church was founded by the Augustinians as a visita in 1576. Its architectural style is of advanced Baroque with its arched bell tower and its main door adorned profusely with very intricate designs cut out from stone. At the back of the church is an old cemetery or graveyard with an old stone dome chapel. The British invasion and Simon de Andes resistance government started the town's day of glory having been made a capital in 1755 until the Americans moved it to San Fernando in 1904. It reached its peak of honor when it was given the royal grant and was named Villa de Bacolor, thus earning the right to use the royal code of arms with the motto Non Plus Ultra. By the 19th century, Bacolor was not only a wealthy center of commerce but was also a veritable center of culture for which it deserved the title 
Pueblo de los Sabios, Atenas de Pampanga. While the town prospered in secular matters, it never failed to distinguish itself for its religiosity. When the Spanish Armada for the five historic battles against the Dutch in 1646, Kapampangan soldiers formed part of the contingent. In the several thrillers, the men invoked the intercession of the Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. On the last day of September of that year, when the fight against the aggressive pirates seemed hopeless, the Virgin of the Holy Rosary gave them the courage to fight on. Not long after, the Spanish Armada emerged victorious from those difficult encounters. On the third day of October, they acclaimed their triumph, weeping and laughing. They beat their hearts as they chanted hymns of ecstasy to the Virgin of the Lenaval. On the second Sunday of October in 1646, the soldiers, a good number of whom were loyal Kapampangan conscripts, marched through the walled city of Manila, and off they walked barefooted in procession to the old Santa Domingo Church, where the image of the Nuestra Señora del Santísimo Rosario de la Naval was enshrined. They rejoiced and sang praises to the Virgin Mother as they were reminded of the same victory she helped made possible in Battle of Lepanto in 1571. As many of the great families of town had thriving business concerns in the walled city and many of their children received their formal education in Spanish schools there, they soon developed a deep devotion to the patroness of the Holy Rosary. These interactions with the walled city gave way to an intense devotion to the Virgin Mother which quickly gained ground in Bacolor by the early 19th century. A missiles pandemic that killed many townspeople in the mid-19th century heightened the devotion. The townspeople cannot simply be outdone in their display of affection and devotion to the Virgen de la Naval. Church inventories in the archives tell of her treasures and jewels so lavishly offered by the old families. The pomp and pageantry of the days of old of how beautiful the lady was as she was carried out in procession along the Dalan Paglimbunan or processional route in her resplendent garments and precious jewels. While the titular patron of the town was San Guillermo Ermitaño, the Virgen de la Naval soon became its patroness. Thus emerged the Fiesta Naval, an observance which later overshadowed the traditional town fiesta on February 10. It was to be a celebration commemorating the miraculous Naval War victories under the mantle of the Virgen del Santísimo Rosario by the town elders, most of whom discovered their Marian devotion in the walled city, agreed on a date weeks away from the traditional Benaval de Manila fiesta at Santo Domingo. It was agreed they hold the Fiesta Naval in Bacolor every third Sunday of November, if only to render undivided attention to the roots of their devotion in Intramuros. Holding a fiesta weeks away from the Renaval de Manila with the naval devotees from Bacolor staying in Manila and their guests to make their pilgrimage to Our Lady in Bacolor. Enshrined in the central niche of the main altar of the church was her grand image in Her Celestial Majesty while another pilgrim yet small image was installed and in a specially built niche on top of the church facade people from all over Pampanga and nearby places came to pay homage to the Virgin Mother. Bacolor, just like any other town, is not a stranger to calamities and tragedies. It had its own fair share of floods, famines, pests, fires, earthquakes, revolutions and wars. When the Spanish era ended in 1898, much of the town center was raised down by fire, and not long after, their newly installed American government moved the capital to nearby San Fernando. From that time, the once vigorous Villa de Bacolor 
would decline into a sleepy old town that wakes up only during Holy Week and on its Lenaval Fiesta. Oblivious of the political and economic currents that were shaping Pampanga, the people of Bacolor were ever faithful to their old ways. They kept their old culture and even managed to gather a harvest of great men and women. They were also able to preserve their own unique religious traditions, most notable of which is the Good Friday procession, unparalleled in its solemnity and grandeur. The procession of the Santo Entierro in its centuries, old Calandra, accompanied by ladies in mourning as they solemnly chant the Stabat Mater to the accompaniment of a string of violins. The image was preceded by a long line of passos, heavily veiled penitents clad in long black tunics who walked solemnly barefoot. The penitents bear traditional symbols and biblical codes from the Passion and Death of Christ. As the procession made its way, the townspeople and pilgrims joined in, trailing behind the processional carriages of the different traditional scared images of Good Friday, the sonorous tone of the Stabat Mater, together with the somber sound of a giant matraca or clapper sounding off from the church's bell tower lent an air of solemnity. The greatest tragedy that befell town, which almost obliterated it from the map, however, was the Great Lahore Tragedy of 1995. A few weeks before the Fiesta Naval, a sudden gush mud called Lahar sunk the town in 15 to 20 feet volcanic mud. Left with no homes to live in and fleeing to safer grounds, the townspeople hesitantly abandoned their beloved town, forced to live in less spacious resettlement sites spread around the safer parts of the province. They tried to pick up their lives once again and literally rise from the ashes. Suddenly, the prosperous people of Bacolor were thrown away from the ancient town of their forefathers and were forced to be distributed in six resettlement areas stretching from the extreme north in Mabalakat, east in Magalam, and further out in the west in Lubao. The church was temporarily closed when the people left town. When it reopened not long after, volunteers dug up the retablos and began cleanup and restoration work on whatever they could save. The ancient images on the Retablo Mayor and the side altars were carefully restored to their formerly glory, but the church complex remained half buried in Lahar. The parish was reopened, albeit with much difficulty, by its parish priest, Reverend Father Nestor Tayag. While most of the Bacolor people lived the last 25 years in their newfound homes, they always come home to their old mother town to pay homage to the Virgen de Naval on her fiesta. As they began to learn how to live in their new environment, they also began bringing home with them old Bacolid culture. They held their own barrio fiestas in their newfound communities and told their children and grandchildren of stories about the lost glory days of Villa de Bacolor. Despite living far away from their beloved town, they always come home to this ancient town at least twice a year. On Good Friday and on the Fiesta Naval, it is a homecoming of sorts to reunite with relatives and friends to keep these ancient traditions and in remembrance of their forefathers. Strong-willed and resilient with their gaze fixed upon their Hindu or mother, the people of Bacolor are firm in their faith. She will forever be their beacon of hope no matter what challenges come their way. The story of the great battles of the Naval ever strikes a chord in the hearts of the Bacolor faithful as the Lady Virgin of the Rosary and her son keeps guard on her ardent devotees. Viva la Virgen! Viva la Virgen del Santísimo Rosario y la Naval de Bacolor! Sabir.